we're so sweet human beings. We, um, you know, we sort of observe each other and we, we take in media and things we see and read and, you know, we, we just, we want to belong, we want to belong, we want to feel comfortable. So, um, you know, we, we, we see maybe on TV quite often people falling in love and so we think, okay, this is, um, this is part of a successful human life it will happen to me and when it does you know then then everything in life will just be so easy um, or, or maybe we hear someone say oh don't cry don't cry don't be upset and so maybe we think oh, okay so sadness is something that's not really a good sign so maybe I should kind of avoid that or if it comes up I need to work out why I'm sad because it's not something that really should be the case and and so I just remember being younger, I was just really looking to everyone and everything to sort of teach me how to, how to live life, what, what does life mean, and um, you know, how to, how to do it well. Because you know, I just wanted to belong, I wanted to fit in, I wanted to experience love, and I wanted to feel safe. And um, yeah, and it's just so sweet what was perhaps a bit less sweet is starting to realize that no matter what I did to get all those positive experiences of love, of belonging, of happiness, of security, there would just often be situations or just thoughts and feelings which were the complete opposite of that. And so I, I thought, okay, I. I'm obviously missing something here, so maybe I need to, I need, I need more education about how to stop the negativity, or maybe I'm just not a very good person deep down, or maybe something happened in my childhood that I can't even remember, but that has had this effect on me that I can't always be happy, I can't always feel love, and, and so yeah, it's, it's started to get a bit confusing as I got older. Um, spending a lot of time and focus trying to rearrange my experience and um, and then it was an interesting point when I realized that even when I was experiencing the positive things like falling in love or you know feeling a sense of success achieving something um, or just waking up and feeling happy there was a bit of a panic that came alongside that of, uh oh, I know it's going to happen here because it happens all the time. It's going to disappear. So already the sort of struggling and striving was kicking in because <laughs> maybe this time I can do something to stop it going away. And um, so, yeah, the hamster wheel is such a good, dis good sort of image, just sort of just trying to sort of keep it all going whether it was trying to hold on to positive experiences or just desperately trying to get rid of negativity and so when I came across this training it was so refreshing to hear that you know I didn't need to do that anymore I didn't need to micromanage my experience and although in the beginning I, I couldn't, you know, I tried to intellectually work that out, how could that be possible? But yet there was just such a relief to hear people say with confidence that this was the case and that it was working really well for them. So this was great because um, I could just see that there was something new here. And instinctively I could see it, it was something I really needed to look into because it wasn't going so well the other way you know I was already exhausted in my 30s <laughs> I was like gonna how was I gonna keep going using this um, this approach that I had been using before so yeah the introduction to open intelligence is just it's so fresh you know being invited to stop thinking just for a moment and recognize what remains. It's clarity and cognizance, this power to know. 
you know, this is open intelligence. And I had never been introduced to open intelligence before, so it was really interesting to be given this instruction to stop thinking just for a moment, because the practice is not to stop any thoughts, it's just to recognize what's, what's aware of everything that we perceive. And, um, and so this was incredible, because it was like stepping off the hamster wheel for the first time. You know, I'd been so busy with all my thoughts and emotions and experiences and trying to sort them out in like in a, quite a kind of mechanical way. And suddenly I was invited to just rest naturally, just for a short moment. And just to experience this sky-like intelligence that's at the basis of all experience. That was really, really nice. And so, and then I was invited to just test these short moments, to take short moments repeated many times. Um, just to gain familiarity with this intelligence that is always there, regardless of all these negative experiences that I was constantly trying to get rid of. And that was an amazing adventure. And it's a bit like, you know, if we switch that fan off, you know, it will just slowly, slowly wind itself down. And I just felt that through doing the 12 empowerments, when I felt ready to really integrate this practice into all, all of my life in a way that I was completely assured of the potent relaxation of open intelligence to, to inform my life in a genuine way, rather than informing my life through all the sparks of thoughts and emotions that are always changing. Um, it, it was just um, incredible to really see that all this negativity that I had been experiencing was also arising inseparable from open intelligence. So open intelligence and all the data streams, all the thoughts and emotions, they're inseparable, like the sky and the color blue. And going through the 12 empowerments just gave me the opportunity to just actually integrate that instinctively, not to have to try and think about it, but just to trust the process of these 12 days of inquiry um, that's offered in Balanced View, the foundational training, to just allow that fan just to slow down. And um, it was, it just changed my life completely. It changed my life because I'd been so afraid of myself and afraid of my negativity and doing so much to try and control it. And, um, and then I just realized that I didn't need to be and that I could completely take the support offered in Balanced View to, to really be fearless, to be fearless to feel everything. And so the life changer was not that suddenly I didn't have any negative thoughts and feelings anymore, but they were just free to be. They are just free to be now. And that's, um, that's amazing. And I, I was looking for this relief. I mean, I was particularly looking for relief in love, in falling in love. That was the main way I felt I could, you know, love myself, truly, was by experiencing falling in love with someone else and sharing that love with a special person. And, um, you know, like the fan also winding down, what happened is that just for me to see that, that, you know, the love is in open intelligence, naturally shining through all of my experience. You know, I don't need to find love located in someone else. And that was great because <laughs> I also experienced a lot of disappointment in falling in love. So to actually be free of the expectation that falling in love means it has to last forever and that my well-being is completely attached to that, that, that was really freeing. And yet, also like a shared, it doesn't mean, okay, so we don't need to have an intimate partner or we don't need to you know, have special feelings. But, um, but what really supported me was to, you know, when falling in love or when being in a sort of intimate relationship, because I was no longer pouring all of my well-being into, 
into that other person because I was starting to gain confidence in my own natural perfection, then uh, I started to be a lot clearer about what I actually wanted in that relationship. And, and that was freeing too because there wasn't so much fear that, okay, if the relationship doesn't work out, here I am, lost again. It was a sense of, no, I, you know, I, I, I take care of myself and, you know, love is already present, there's open intelligence. So it was just, it's been an amazing uh, journey with the 12 empowerments just to really finally feel okay, feel okay with myself, regardless of how I'm thinking or feeling. And that's such a relief because I never know, <laughs> I never really know how I'm going to think and feel. Sometimes it feels like, oh, I think this because of this, and then it's a whole <laughs> joining the dots. But sometimes it's so random what comes up. And so to feel so stable, resting at the basis of all experience is, um, oh, it's just such a beautiful way to live. And it, it makes it so much easier to, you know, relate, relate to everyone because finally I have the key to really truly relate to myself in, in a peaceful, loving and authentic way whilst experiencing everything, like sitting on this chair now. <laughs> if I described everything I'm thinking and feeling now, well, <laughs> I probably wouldn't be able to just share from my heart like I'm doing now. So, yeah, it's an amazing invitation. The, um, you know, everything's on offer at the center here, and it's great to be here. There are trainings happening, intro trainings, also the 12 empowerments. There's a whole community of people that are actually using the practice of short moments in their life. And, you know, you, you can just speak to them and hear the results from them. So, yeah, and then when we, when we go back home, we have the whole support of uh, Balanced View online and, you know, we can support ourselves completely and um, making support and complete self-love a priority through the commitment to relying on open intelligence is, you know, is exactly what Balanced View provides anyone who, who wants it. So.